Hello, I'm Ron Clark. Today's video is going to be about the mental exercises of step six. These are very important exercises that have, we begin the process of attaining the mental equilibrium of the elements, just like we obtain the astral equilibrium of the elements. We go about it in a different way, but at the same result. The step six exercises, mental exercises, start with what Barden called meditation on the own mind. And I will read from the book here um, and talk about what he has to say. In this step, we are faced with the meditation on the mind. I have already been talking in detail about the mental sphere and the mental body hence the mind, in the theoretic part of this book. It is worthwhile to have a look now at the functions of the own mind with respect to the four elements. Differentiating these functions, which can be achieved by special meditation. The properties of the mind in conformity with the four elements are as follows. The will is subject to the fire principle. The intellect, with all its parallel aspects, as there are intelligence and memory, underlies the principle of air. The feeling, with all its aspects, belongs to the water principle. And the consciousness, with all its aspects, establishing the connection of all the three elements, is subordinate to the earth principle. Look inward into your own mind, observe yourself and the functions of the mind, and meditate on it. You must know how to imagine each of the functions corresponding to the element. If you, if you manage to distinguish the functions of the mind, i.e., if you've got a clear impression about it, you may continue. This preliminary exercise is very important because it will enable the magician to influence these functions with the respective elements on the mental plane in himself as well as in others, to master and strengthen or eliminate them. Again, this is about achieving the elemental, the mental <coughs> equilibrium of the elements. Okay? Yes. Okay, so we'll stop there and explain that a bit. Um, <clears throat> so, <clears throat> what he's saying here is that the mental body has regions just like the physical body has four regions, the legs, the gut, the chest, and the head. The astral body has four regions, have you, as you have discovered with your uh, black and white soul mirrors. These are the astral regions of the astral, the elemental regions of the astral body. The mental body. <clears throat> so the physical body, these are physical areas, okay? The astral body, these are astral regions, you know, and various sorts of emotions and feelings and passions, etc. Four different types of uh, emotional content. The mental body is your awareness. Simply put, it's your awareness, is your mental body. <clears throat> so, you know, watching this video, you're doing this with your mental body, with your awareness. So awareness, we define four regions once again. So the earth region is a normal awareness. So I'll, I'll approach it from uh, an ascend, ascending uh, fashion here, from the most familiar to the least familiar, okay? So the most familiar is the earth region. It's the whole consciousness in the present moment 
you're in your physical body, you feel sensations, the full content of your emotions, your astral body is here present, and your awareness, you are consciously aware here. So it's all these aspects of the awareness are present in the moment, in the physical body. The water region is that emotional content. It's your awareness of your personality. It's your awareness of the energy exchange. Okay? This is your astral awareness. Same thing as your astral body, because when you... <clears throat> Be aware of your body. It's the same with the physical body. You're in your physical body when you are aware of your physical body. You're in your astral body when you are aware of that aspect of yourself, your astral self, your personality, your emotions, the energy exchange with everything else. The air region is your thinking Conscious awareness, the normal day-to-day -day awareness, it thinks. It's the, <clears throat> it's the oh, part of your awareness that interfaces with the brain, the part of a mind, it's where mind and brain meet, basically, influenced by both. <clears throat> so it, it thinks, it, it analyzes, it communicates, it perceives. Okay? <clears throat> That's the air region. Now the fire region, it's the, the region that is free. The aspect of mind that it's not bound by thought, that is not bound by brain. Okay? It's, you experience it in the emptiness of mind. That's the fire region. You experience it when you connect with the I. That's the fire region. The fire region is that aspect of the awareness that is capable, the only aspect that is capable of breaching that barrier between the sequential and the non-sequential, between the temporal and the eternal. It is the part of mind that rises up to the higher levels. So, on the way down, we have that higher mind which perceives essential meaning. That's the aspect of your mind that you're using when you try to perceive essential meaning. The fire aspect it is without words. It's pre-rational. It just perceives. And it communicates. It perceives and expresses. Okay? But primarily, it perceives as we incarnate, okay? Then there is the air region of the mind, which is focused entirely downward <coughs> into uh, your life, into the temporal moment. <coughs> and that's just the thinking part of the mind. This is normal awareness. And it's with that awareness that we feel the astral presence and we feel our physical body, we inhabit our physical body. So it's that aspect of mind descends into the water region and the earth region to be here now. It's all together here in the earth region. Okay. Now that's really the key. <clears throat> to this meditation that he's demanding that you, you pursue. It's really very simple. If you think of your awareness in the, this way, of the elements, the four elements, earth, where it's all connected, the water, where it's really fluid and you know, emotional and passionate, and energetic, the air where it's all <clears throat> words, all thoughts to the fire that is liberated.
and free. So, if you use this as your guide to meditation, you'll very quickly um, be able to discern, as he says, the aspects of the mental body. <clears throat> and you will see how you have worked with all four of these aspects in the training up to now. Okay, let's see where we leave off. Okay, ah, the last bit that he says here is it will enable the magician to influence these functions with the respective element on the mental plane in himself as in others to master and strengthen or to eliminate them this is very important you have to be able to perceive these four aspects of your awareness and to experience all four aspects of your awareness um, singularly, if you will, um, you know, experience the, your whole awareness in your physical body, in your astral body, you know, experience just your astral body, just the feeling part of your existence. Experience just the thinking aspect of the mind and experience the fire aspect, the the part that is free, okay? So you need to be able to identify them. Then you can begin to influence them with the elements. Using the elements on the mental plane for yourself. And this is how you will balance the aspects, the elemental aspects of the mental body and achieve that mental equilibrium. That is <clears throat> for the future work. Um, <clears throat> okay. Another exercise is to ascertain oneself of the whole mental body in the astral body and together with it in the material body similar to a hand in a fine silk glove which is put into a thick glove. Your hand ought to feel both gloves. The same thing is supposed to occur in the whole mental body. You should feel your mind in the fine astral body and this one again in the material body. This feeling is the mind. Meditate on this problem at any suitable opportunity. As soon as you are quite sure that your mind is captivating the spiritual body, as well as the material one, feeling and moving it, and that it is, as it were, your mind which performs all actions through the two wraps, you can again go one step further. <clears throat> again, this, this model of the four elemental regions of the mental body makes this actually quite simple. So the air region of the mental body, which we'll call the mental body in this context, um, is what he's referring to primarily here, um, is your awareness, okay? So bring your awareness into the astral awareness become aware of especially that that body energetic and then you know bring that down into your physical body so your awareness feels that astral energetic and feels the physical body spread your awareness the, the mental body throughout your physical body and feel all the different parts of it along with that astral energetic. 
When you can do that, you've essentially accomplished what he is asking you to do here. To sense that it is all working together, so any physical action naturally involves uh, the awareness and the passions, you know. It's all combined in every action, okay. <clears throat> Everybody, whether consciously, half-consciously, or nearly subconsciously, is executing some action suggested by an inner or outer impulse, without himself paying any attention to it. The next exercise will teach you to accomplish actions fully consciously, little acts in the beginning, later on great ones, and you ought to try to extend the duration of each conscious action. The wording consciously does not mean that one is all attention with the mind, but with the imagination and feeling that the mind, with the help of the soul and the material body, is accomplishing this action, which is what I just described. But So instead of having it just as a, um, <clears throat> a theoretical model, this is actually doing it consciously consciously integrating the awareness and being aware of the astral energetic and the physical sensation together while you are doing an action. That's what we mean by full consciousness, not attentiveness. This is different. <clears throat> not just noting the things that you are doing and commenting on them in your brain, it is to consciously, with your awareness, feel the astral energetic in your hand and the physical hand as it moves. Okay? For example, if I am walking along the road, and I do not think about the fact that I am walking, but that in my... that but that my mind is walking and moving the astral and material feet. The same thing happens to the arms and all the other parts of the body. If you are to accomplish any action in this way for at least 10 minutes, you are mastering the exercise perfectly. The longer you can undo, endure this without side effects such as fits of dizziness, feeling tiredness, disturbances of balance, all the better for you. For this particular reason, it is advisable to begin first with small actions over a short spell of time and to extend them until you get used to the attitude and can extend them as long as you like. <clears throat> I never encounter these side effects that he's talking about, the dizziness, the lack of balance, you know, etc. So, you know, each person will probably be different than that. It is, at first, demanding. But it just takes a little while to get used to approaching things in this way. This experiment is very important because it will give the scholar the possibility to accomplish any action in mental as well as an astral connection with the material body according to its working with the mental or the astral sphere. Such an action is called the magical action. <clears throat> the scholar will certainly understand now why magic rites never show any success with persons who have not been initiated or have not been trained in magic, etc., etc. <clears throat> okay. So, <clears throat> the point here is to <clears throat> understand the structure of the awareness, the four regions of the mental body, and to make use of that structure consciously and intentionally. Okay? So that you can, in the end, accomplish any action as a magical action. In other words, you are consciously aware of your mental body being within your astral body 
within your physical body. So any action you do with your hands, say, you know, I'm doing this at the mental level, the astral level, and the physical level. That is a magical action. It must encompass all three levels simultaneously with full consciousness. That's the point. It does automatically, but when you add the ingredient of your full consciousness to that act and your intention, it becomes a magical act. It, it, it has more impact than it does when it is unconscious. The next task will deal with the magical training of the senses. First of all, I, this is a precursor to the next step seven work with the subtle senses. First of all, a very important preliminary exercise, similarly to the previous exercise you are realizing in this one as well, that not your materialized see everything, but that it is the mind which perceives all with the help of the astral and physical eyes. Let me repeat that. Similarly to the previous exercise, you are realizing in this one as well that not your material eyes see everything, but that it is the mind which perceives all with the help of the astral and the physical eyes. You got that? So, I'm looking through my eyes, but it's my mind that is looking through my astral physical eyes. Because the astral body and the physical body are right here always together. It's just a matter of are we conscious of them or not. So, what he is saying is you can consciously look through your astral and physical eyes together to see. That is what we are doing, but here he's demanding that you become conscious of that fact. Okay? Do meditate on this problem as often as possible. You will have to imagine at least for five minutes that the mind is looking through the physical eyes and does actually see that it is your mind, it's your awareness that is seeing. But you need to be conscious that it is mind that is seeing. Okay? <clears throat> the longer you are able to endure this, all the better for you. You will become master here as well by constant repetition of this experiment, okay? Shouldn't take long, it's actually very easy. Having achieved a success in this exercise with the eyes, turn to the ears by realizing that it is not your physical ear that is receiving the sound waves, but that the mental ears are perceiving everything with the help of the astral and material eyes. Ears, rather. <laughs> A little misprint there. Okay? Just like with the eyes. Your awareness is hearing the sound. <clears throat> it does so through the sentient body, the astral body, and the physical body. The physical organs, <sighs> with the help of the astral sentient body, delivers to the brain, to the mind, the meaning of the sound. Okay? <clears throat> if you can book the same result as you did in the case of the eyes, continue in the same manner with the senses and imagine that the mind, with the help of the astral body, and this one again with the aid of the material body, is feeling objects, feeling cold, warmth, etc. Okay, so he is outlining three different senses to work with in this way. Seeing, hearing, and feeling. These are the three primary senses. 
um, that are really what one needs for magical work, okay? <clears throat> Practice this experiment diligently until you can master it. You want to master all three senses independently, just like you did, uh, you know, uh, with the senses previously in imagining, in creatively imagining the um, sensory inputs. <clears throat> until you can master it, over the same period with eyes, ears, and a feeling. Should you wish to develop special faculties, try it also with other two sense organs, the olfactory sense and the other two sense organs, the olfactory sense and the taste. So you can do it with smell and taste if you want. But the keenest attention should be paid to the three or four mentioned sense organs, that is seeing, hearing, and feeling, which are most useful for practical magic. If you have achieved good results in the mental attainment of the senses, the mental ascertainment of the senses, try to adjust your mind to two of the senses at the same time as you did with the concentration of the senses. Begin with the eyes and the ears. You manage to bring it about for at least five minutes without any interruption. Do adjust your mind to three senses at once that is, to seeing, hearing, and feeling. In other words, it's just like the previous work with the sensory concentrations. You know, you combine two senses and then three, etc. If you can manage these, this as well, you have indeed made progress in your magical development. This preliminary exercise is very important for the so-called clairvoyance, clairhearing, and clairfeeling, and ought to be mastered perfectly. This is preparation for the next step in this regard. So, <clears throat> those are the mental exercises of step six, and they're very important. It's, the thing that I want to uh, express to you the most is the value of the, the dividing the mental body into these four regions. It explains so much of one's experience and the way one's experience integrates through the awareness. You see, it is, it is possible to integrate those experiences of the fire region, which occur without thought, into the thinking awareness. This is what this model tells you, basically, that it is... It is connected, and one can bring those experiences down into the normal awareness. <clears throat> so we do, we do, this is the way in which we do remember um, things like our dreams, or really wonderful um, spiritual experiences, if you will, okay? So, I hope that has helped in some way with the step six mental exercises. Good stuff. It's really good stuff. All right, that's it for me. Bye-bye.